So uh, I was going to do a live stream for you guys where I just kind of go through my sound design process, which is absolute randomness um, and kind of just flying by the seat of my pants. And hopefully we can get the chat going too so I can actually interact with you guys. Sweet. Um, yay, we're back. What up, dude? Sorry about that. I am <laughs> new to YouTube streaming. Much better on Twitch. So if you guys have any questions or requests while I'm doing this, please don't hesitate. Um, but I'm going to obviously kind of be just doing my own thing and going kind of random here. So before the chat shut down, I was kind of working on this snot bass. And I really want to do this sort of snotty dubstep neuro bass that I can later resample. <laughs> And I haven't played with um, much of the kilohertz stuff, and I've had it for quite a while. So let me play around with that. Um, and I'm going to be trying to use the different effects to achieve that. Hey, how's it going, Spiderhound? Good to see you, man. Thanks for tuning in. Sorry about the earlier technical difficulties. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to be making weird bases. Let's do it. Probably hang out for the next hour or so. So I don't know if you guys have played with Kilohertz before, but it's, um, you know, they came up with Phase Plant, which is a really popular synth right now. But if you subscribe to uh, their, I think they have like a subscription-based service, you get all the modules. And I honestly have not played around with them much. Uh, so I'm going to be playing around with it and seeing what I can achieve. <laughs> This four mint filter is really cool. Um, I'm just going to record myself getting some sort of movement here. I like that little vocal movement. And if anyone in the chat is more familiar with Phase Plant than me and the Kilohertz stuff, please let me know because I'm not very comfortable with it. Um, that was kind of my goal today is just to play around with these and see what I can get. I really want to play with the disperser. This thing's really cool. I don't know if you guys have played with this before and the description online doesn't really make sense to me. It's like a literal phase disperser, which it takes the phase and like shifts it and warps it. But you just get these really kind of weird, wet sort of sounds. <laughs> kind of got to find a good uh, area. Oh, Mike's quieter than Ableton. Thank you. Let me turn up my input. How's that? Um, yeah, the disperser is so fun. Let's see what I can get out of it. Let's do another pass at it. I can go even more if that's not good enough. I can also turn down my Ableton input just a little bit for you guys. There we go. Yeah, it's kind of, it's so weird. Yeah, it's kind of four minty. It's kind of snotty. You kind of get some just amazing results. And I quite often in my sound design like to just keep reiterating something and just seeing what happens and we're gonna do that like it's kind of making the top end super bizarre what happens if we pinch it sweet no thank you for uh telling me how to tweak my levels so there we go that's sounding a lot better Let's do one more pass at it. Oh, thank you. Thank you, B. Let's do one more pass at the disperser. Yeah. 
Don't think we need to do this last one. Since this seems to be going in a snotty direction, I kind of want to keep the snot going. So let's try playing with the frequency shifter. And, oh, interesting. There isn't a dry wet on this frequency shifter. It's just an on off. So it probably won't achieve what I'm hoping to achieve. Yeah, no, I'm gonna need the Ableton one. So for anyone that doesn't play with frequency shifters too much, if you have somewhere in, in the middle of the dry and the wet, then you kind of get this really cool phasey ring modi sound um, where it starts to hooray for boogers. Oh my God, you're making me self-conscious. Uh, <laughs> if you have it somewhere in the middle, oh, you're talking about the snot bass. Oh, now, now I'm just ashamed. If you have it somewhere in the middle, you kind of get this ring modi wobble effect. And... <laughs> slow it down you can even tune it so for example this is an E so <laughs> excellent so for floating around 41 Hertz which is an E you can actually tune it and then you can slightly uh, offset it And get like a slight detune going. Slight, but I like it. What happens if it's wide? Way too wide. Um, now at this stage of the game, well, that's weird. Also, you guys may be hearing this in mono, by the way. Uh, I couldn't quite figure out how to get you guys a stereo signal yet. So if you're not hearing that get wide, I think you guys are just stuck with the mono today, unfortunately. But that should still give you guys a good idea of what's going on. So at this point, I usually like to add erosion to snotty bases to get them out of just pure snot realm and get them into more kind of distortion realm without distorting it. Especially if you do like the wide noise setting then we're kind of adding this nice texture to it which kind of emulates what you would get out of some distortions without actually having to uh, use distortion uh, even though this is technically a distortion but you know what i mean like an ampy sort of style of distortion so let's see what we can kind of get Not the best. Not necessarily sold on that. Not sold on what erosion's doing. So let's go with some filtering. So continuing in my attempt to play with um, the kilohertz stuff. Let's try something different. Let's play with the phase distortion. What's this? That's kind of neat. Ooh, it's like spreading. Spreads phase offsets to the left and right so it makes this phase offset stereo so maybe i want to do this just subtly i really like that i never noticed that with the kill heart stuff there's like a little info window um i know it's it sounds like a kitten in a blender it's, yeah it's definitely something gargling that's for sure it adds a constant phase offset not sold on that yeah that sounded like the kitten I don't want to normalize it. Um, normalizes the signal, making the effect insensitive to input gain. 
Well, the input gain is pretty consistent right now anyway, so that's probably not going to make a huge difference. Let's add some drive. I like that, just subtle. That might be deceptively more awesome, where it might be adding gain. Pre-phase distortion, peaking 1.8 with it. Yeah, peaking three, so it's not necessarily better. It just might be the loudness is better to me, but we can use this loudness and let's run it into some distortion. I really like the fuzz. That almost does what I was trying to do with the erosion. Stereo turbo. Ooh, that's kind of cool. But I don't really want to mess up the stereo right now. I like that discreetly. Cool. So we've kind of built up the base of our sound. B-A-S-E, not B-A-S-S. How do you get the gain staging to go down that much with distortion? How do you get the gain staging to go down that much with distortion? Um, I may not understand that question, but what you could do is if you're peaking, actually use uh, is? How do you? Uh, still don't understand. But if you use distortion, oftentimes it can shave off a lot of the gain. So for example, we're kind of peaking at like 2.3. Distortion, if it has any sort of like clipping or something, it'll chop off the top and it'll save us headroom. This doesn't do that. It doesn't seem like it has a clipping in it, so it's not really saving us headroom. But what we can do is we can introduce saturator. And it prevented us from going over. So that's how I kind of use that to save headroom. Now, since we're in this snot realm anyways, I'm going to take advantage of this saturator. If you guys open up the wave shader, shaper part of Saturator and you play with the curve, it uh, introduces uh, this sort of snotty effect. Um, so for example, oh, sorry. Uh, Dorian says, not clearly asking there, basically just getting the peak down below zero. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you can use distortion to do that or just turn it down. Thankfully, Ableton with their own effects, a lot of them, can go above zero and then uh, there's still like headroom within Ableton before it starts to clip. It's only once you start to add effects that are third party that they can tend to clip. But yeah, Saturator does it. Now if we introduce this curve, the more we do it, it'll actually add to this snottiness by, I guess this is like wave folding, wave shaping. I'm not quite sure, but it's gonna like fold the wave in a cool way. So maybe not that much, but. So this is pretty wild where we just went up. Zero peak volume, we saved peak volume. And then the overall loudness of the bass went up. Now that's a little too crunchy for my liking, but maybe we can work subtractively before it and see what happens. So first, I always like to throw an OTT into the mix somewhere just to see what happens. Also, I'm gonna save this real quick. Um, sometimes you never know when something's gonna crash. So let's save that. Um, yeah, Nick says clipping only matters if the master is clipping. When it comes to Ableton stock stuff, totally, yeah. I, if Sort of. I mean, 
clipping can matter. Like for example, if clipping goes into saturator, but I, I totally know what you mean. It, it, for the most part, if it was clipping at this stage right now, it wouldn't matter. Um, and it wouldn't even matter in the exp uh, in the master really until export. Uh, so yeah, totally. I agree, but let's see what happens. <laughs> See, it's deceptive because now we're not getting the distortion. So let's toss this after. Yeah, it's too early to need OTT right now. So let's start getting more movement in this sound pre-saturator. And how I'm going to do that, and honestly, one of my favorite ways is just EQ8. I really like just automating bands with EQ8, although I've been starting to do it a little bit less just because I don't really like the sound of EQ8. Um, but let's test out. How was working with Sabai? Dude, it was awesome. Sabai and I have such complementary skill sets where he's really good uh, musically, naturally. He's really good at capturing kind of like pop ideas and he's really good at capturing melodies and vibe and i'm obviously uh, i excel a bit more at like the sound design and the mixing so our, our skills really complemented each other um it was also just an interesting experience because i'd only met him in person one time before and every time we hung out we kind of develop a bit more of this friendship because you're essentially like in a submarine with someone when you're producing you're just like locked away with them so yeah it was a blast um for anyone that doesn't know who Sabai is. Uh, Sabai is uh, an artist who recently released on Monster Cat, and him and I have a track coming out on Monster Cat April 21st, so a few days. I'm very excited. Um, oh, that's awesome. You worked with him too. Yeah, he's awesome. I, I really liked working with him. Uh, what track do you work on him with? That That's cool. Is it Million Days or is it something unreleased? And are you from Vancouver? <laughs> So actually, as I mentioned before, I'm gonna work subtractively before we go into this distortion. So let's... This distortion might be a bit much at this stage of the game. Um, Oh, that's awesome. You're Vancouver based. Nice. Send me the song when you guys are done. I want to hear it. Yeah, what up, Vancouver fam? Bo, bo. Um, yeah, the distortion's a bit much. And it's kind of preventing me from shaping the sound without getting too much crunch. And I don't want too much crunch at this stage of the game. So I'm going to try something else. Is automating the bands on an EQ basically the same as that first plugin you were using? Let's jump to the, um, very similar, although a formant filter would look a little more like uh, this, or maybe less of a singing one. It would look a little more like this and moving this, which actually sounds really cool with this. So it'd be kind of like doing that, um, but not, not as specifically, but you actually just uh, opened up what I want to do. So thank you. Yeah. I like that. It distorts a little at the end. So let's... Uh, I don't want to clip it. This might actually be a good time for OTT because then the OTT would probably prevent that clipping at the end. Um, yeah, OTTs helps balance it a little more. And just so we keep a little bit more of the original sound, let's see what happens if we just layer some of the dry. Yeah, we getting some snot. Oh, 
Oh yeah, that's way better with the movement. So let's see what happens now if we go back to the erosion. We tried it kind of earlier. And I'm just wanting to get that like nice top end buzz that we're kind of missing. Uh, especially now that this is so filtered. So let's just see what happens. Obviously this is overkill. I'm just trying to see kind of what I'm introducing. I like that if it was super quiet. Although I don't like the inconsistency of it. I don't like that as this goes down, this disappears or it gets introduced. Fortunately, gotta go. So I'm gonna try another thing here. This is a really cool way to totally take everything you've been working on and throw it out the window. If you guys uh, go into vocoder and you go into pitch tracking mode, sometimes it can be really cool, but it totally throws out what you were doing. But as you can hear, it can just be so disgusting. Except it does that sometimes, and I've never understood why. Sometimes it'll be pitching, or like tracking the pitch in a very specific way, and then it totally resets and sucks. And I gotta redo it. And then when I go back to it, it's doing what I was doing. I really don't understand why. I've tried to figure it out. If anyone knows why it suddenly ends up being high pitched, please explain. Like that, there goes all my hard work again. Let's try it one last time. And if it craps out on me, I give up. Let's see. Oh, like that's just so gross. Oh, that could go into distortion so well. Um, I'm gonna resample this before we lose it. Yeah, I'm gonna resample this before we lose it and we're about to uh, snake off into two different directions here. Let's make sure I don't have any mastering on. Boop, 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 boop. I like using vocoder on a duplicated track of what I'm working on and slightly layering it with the OG, then filtering the highs, lows. Yeah, I would have liked to have layered it, but because it keeps crapping out on me, I might not. But now we have this resampled version. The only thing is I don't think this will layer very well. I mean, this is obviously gonna distort when I hit play. They're just too, a bit too different now. However, we're gonna go off in two different paths. So now we're gonna make, uh, we're gonna work on this one sound. And then we're gonna go back to the original sound and we're gonna work on them separately. So this one has a really weird sort of 100 hertz tone. I actually don't know if I like how I shifted the formant. So let's go back a step perhaps. Yeah, that's a little better. That's... No! We lost it. Fuck. Every time. Gotta delete it. Reopen it. Do it one more time, but I had it. I had what I wanted. so gross let's try and it restart god i i don't get it i i honestly have no clue why it does it but now i know the settings so i'm going to quickly resample this down cool 
I know. Why does it do it? That is wild. Okay. We got it. After much trouble. Um, by the way, just want to say hi to everyone tuning in. Hello, hello. Um, thank you for tuning in. These might layer. But I think I'm better off just working on them as two separate sounds. So let's go off on a tangent. And let's work on this one first. So now let's reintroduce a sub to this sound. So since it no longer really has a sub. And I've got a little rack I like to use. Just made it. Where is it? Sorry, there we go, fatty sub. Let's layer those. And I feel like we've got to get tone back into this sound. So first of all, we can get a little bit of texture on the top. Get a little bit of tone out of the sub. And let's start mangling this. So we need more snot. And we need to start getting movement. So let's start playing with plugins. Seeing what's gonna really start changing this. My prediction is I really wanna play with the serum filters. Combs a little overused. Let's try maybe the flange plus. Let's try it not on the sub. Where would you want your sub signal to sit in relation to your mid-high bass sounds? Um, usually, I mean, it's, it's really hard in this context. So in this context, usually what I do is just go for a really flat response. So when I say flat, let's say I were to get the Voxango. Voxango span. See how we've got a huge bump here and almost no highs. I probably want this flat. Now in a mix, I don't want it flat. In a mix, I kind of want like a sexy ramp down, maybe a bit of a smile to it. Um, in this context though, to make it the most usable, I think it's easier when it's flat. Because if there's like a ramp, for example, then if you pitch it up, there's like these, there's like a big bump in the mids or something. But when it's flat, then when you pitch it down or pitch it up, it keeps that consistent flatness. Does that make sense? Um, so in this context, I'm probably gonna end up with a flat curve. Oh, that's gross. Not bad. These aren't bad, but they're kind of smudging the nice snottiness we were going for. So I don't know if I necessarily want to stick with it. What else we got? They have the new scream filters are new, probably like a year old. Yeah, the serum effects is kind of taking away from what I'm going for. I say we just start adding some movement in here to make things a little more interesting than a stagnant sound. Let's 
resample that. You guys will also notice I, I just eventually just give up on keeping my sub clean. Really bad habit. Yeah, let's go with that. It's kind of neat. Now let's add some erosion to that. I like it. Let's do the old OTT. It's pretty gross. I'm at a loss though because we've kind of lost all tone in this sound. Like I wouldn't consider that tonal. So why don't we obliterate this sound further? So what I'm gonna do, and I'll just hope for tone. What I'm gonna do is we're gonna go back to the sound. We're going to put trash on it. And we're going to put camel fat, camel fat on it. And yeah, we getting trashy. And we're going to, oh, maybe we don't need trash too, maybe just camel fat. Now it's too early for camel fat. We got to, yeah, camel fat's no longer available. My friend Dan gave it to me after the fact. It's one of my few cracked plugins, to be honest. Um, and I feel guilty about that, but I'm an honest man. Uh, so I first, now I think is a good time to introduce the flanger now that we have movement, because now it's not this like. <laughs> Yeah, this is a perfect time for it. Yeah, that's nasty. What happens if we stretch this out? Yup, let's record that. Yo, see you later, man. Have a good one. I think the tail's too long on this. Let's try that again.
So this one sound I'm clearly not being uh, very mindful with. I'm just having fun here. I'm clearly not being strategic, but sometimes that's just how you get cool sounds. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take this. We're going to put trash on it. We're going to put uh, OTT on it. We're going to do a nice ramp. Actually, no, let's just keep it even. No, no, let's do a bit of a ramp. 13, 16. Also, what's our stereo with that on this sound at this point? We might need to make things wider. Yeah, right now the sound is very mono. Um, there's only like noise on the side. We won't worry about width too much right now. But what we're going to do is we're going to resample and we're going to play with trash. Maybe a bit too much. That uh, was clear very early on. Actually, this might the sound might be close to done. Might be close to done. Let's see what happens if I put this in sampler. That's usually my test. So I take sampler, drop it in. Set the right root note. Set the volumes to zero. Arm it. And let's add some punch. And let's see if there's any good moments. Those are pretty cool. Sounded really bad like when I was playing the thing as a whole. It just might need more move, like voweliness. But like, it's a really good snot sound. Let's call this a sound. So what I do is I export it, usually 4832, um, just because if it's 48, I have more options to pitch it down and still get highs out of it. Go to my desktop, and then I usually have my basis folder 2020. Let's call this snot today. There we go. That's one down. We're going to go back to our first base, and then I'm going to make a wobble to finish off this sort of test stream, uh, mostly because it's my first year anniversary with my girlfriend. Oh, and uh, she's sitting there without an iPad, without a boyfriend, and I'm here doing this for you guys. So I'm going to do one, two more bases. So let's go back to this one. Yeah, this one is the one that actually had potential. Thank you, Dorian. I hope I'm saying your name right. I've never seen Dorian spelt like that. So I hope I'm saying it right. This needs more texture. Big time.
Crunchy taco can be cool. It's just usually quite noisy. Oh, <laughs> what's up, Dorian? That's good. <laughs> Sorry about that. That's cool. I want to get some width into this sound at this point. We don't have any sort of width. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to create a filter movement. So let's record that. Uh, one more time, that wasn't good enough. Oh, I keep missing that last note. Let's do that again, or the last movement. That's okay, my email when I was 14 was lucifer's puppet at hotmail.com and uh it's still connected to certain things so don't worry i am equally embarrassed by my old email and tags so let's make this band wide So it's like we've got width in here, but only on like one band right now. Again, you guys probably can't even hear that. I think you guys are listening to the mono signal. That's cool though, I'm liking that. I'm also thinking I kind of want to add a bit more of the texture of the E in here. So, a low E is 41.2 to be exact. So let's see what happens if we add an auto pan. Set it to 41.2. Turn this up. Let's shift the phase a bit. Oh, that's crazy. You guys can't hear that but the slight offset, the left and right ear right now, sounds so good. Uh, obviously it's making the sub a little wide, but that's okay, we're gonna add a clean one soon. Yeah, that's... I actually really like that. But... Let's keep the low end kind of clean. And then we'll do the old group, duplicate, delete, and flip. What am I doing? Flip. The only problem is we're losing a bit too much clarity. In a, so maybe if we layered this with the raw. Yeah, I like it. It's adding some nice stereo width in there. So now... Let's really get some movement in here now. I'm going to add serum on here. And let's start playing with the filter. First, I want to get like a really weird notch going through this. I wish there was a wider one. Maybe notch not. Why can't I hear that? It's not really achieving what I want. Like, I think I want to create 
this really cool sort of flick sound to turn this into more of like a wobble. Like I want it to be more like this. Oh, is I not hitting the frequency, frequency knob by accident? My bad. That's okay. I still think this will actually get what I want. Yeah, I think this is closer to what I want. Yeah. So let's start exaggerating that. So now would be a time for serum effects to come back. But this time, let's do like a high, uh, one of the multis. I want to do the classic high pass pull. Oops, did I grab the cutoff? Okay, I did. So let's and let's have maybe the pole like come down because then you have like a top kind of yo yo did that help Subtle, but I like it. I kind of want to go for like just a crazy sort of rhythm base. Um, let's do flange filter. That's so nice. I don't want quite that much resonance afterward. Oh, that's crazy. Oh, I almost did like it all the time though. Yeah, I'll take your suggestion. Let's do the band reject. Do a little bit of subtraction. Um, actually, let's do Ableton's band reject. Auto filter band reject. Yeah, let's see what happens if we kind of like subtract through the sound. Yeah, it kind of makes it waterier. And let's make it not ramp up out of nowhere. Uh, we're hearing that maybe more like this. Oops. Yeah. Ooh, that's crazy. Oh, we're going to get some nasty sort of sound design rhythm bass here. I think it's time we bring back the disperser. I can hear that. So 
we gotta find like a really nice sweet spot, eh? Um, let's try and find like a nice sweet spot. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Ooh, that's snotty. What up, Blake? Although, I don't know if it's adding to the sound. We might be better off just going without it. I think we will. Let's... Add a bit more tone into this. Actually, let's see what kilohertz stuff we haven't used yet. We haven't tried their comb filter. For water effects, adding the vocoder with the modulator option, then adding an OTT with different mix outputs while playing with vocoder settings gets a cool effect. Not trying to backseat. No, no, no. I, I love the suggestions. Um, but I we already tried going in a vocoder direction with this bass, and it kind of took us in. I don't know, didn't I, I personally didn't like the territory, but no, keep the suggestions coming. I like it. This is crazy. I haven't used this comb filter. It seems really simple to use. But it doesn't seem to mangle the low end like the um serum one does. Like, I don't know if there's just no sub in this sound left or if it's just preserving it. Anyways, let's try tuning it. So we're working at 41.2. Let's try 82-ish. That's stereo knob. You guys can't hear that. I'm so sorry. That stereo knob, though, is wild. That's crazy, actually. I really need to play with the kilohertz stuff more. Okay, that's too much, but we're getting there. Dude, this is some transformer shit. Wait, you can't on headphones? Oh, you guys can hear this in stereo? Oh, I swear you shouldn't be able to. I think I accidentally gave you guys mono audio because I'm setting this to a multi output, but then the uh, audio output you're receiving is like zoom audio. Dude, I had to do the weirdest roundabout to get you guys audio. I do not know how to do this. So I thought you guys had mono, but maybe not. Okay, I really want to make this as good as possible before uh, I leave. So what's the regular distortion do? Oh, that's nice. Oh, I love the bite just at the top from this. Yo, what up, dude? Just suggestion, maybe some granular synthesis. Yes, I might try some in a sec. I do want to try some, but I want I want to try this distortion stuff. Um, I'm also trying to think of how I would add granular onto this. Actually, I've, okay, well, now, you know, now, now you've piqued my interest. What would, I don't want to do granular synthesis, but I want to see what would happen if I added a grain delay kind of acting as granular synthesis. So let's see. So let's do, obviously we want some of the dry signal while we're making it. Oh, that was just so cool for making this metallic. Let's layer that with the dry signal. That was actually, I know that's not what you intended or implied, but. Oh, 
I just love the tonal tail on that. Dude, we're getting into some nasty squelch rhythm territory. Now this is too much. First of all, I want to add dynamic? Or is that removing it? Well, whatever that is, I like that more. That's more basic. Oh, that has such a weird flutter. What is the bias will add a DC offset to the signal before distorting. Oh, it will. That's weird. Adding some bias can prevent the distorted audio from sounding hollow and uninteresting. Yeah. Oh, that's weird. So it's not drive this as hard. And man, the spread stuff on all the kilohertz is so nice. That's too much. Oh, this is just gonna offset the distortion, won't it? Different amounts of bias. Yeah, I don't want that. Our sound's already pretty wide. Not gonna lie, I kinda just wanna finish this off. Like I think sometimes it's good to know when like a sound's near its end. And this one is. I don't like that the OTT is bringing out the tail. So maybe OTT. Oh, I didn't even think about that. What if we... Okay, we're going to do something after. Okay, so we're going to... Clip this. We're gonna drive it backwards so we're not clipping as hard. Or trim it down. Okay, so this is variant one of the bass. Then I got an idea. Check this out. So that's gonna be variant one, the OG. Now check this out. We're going to add an arpeggiator on here. And we're going to change two things. First of all, we're going to use an LFO to randomize the rate. It's going to smooth, small depth, very slow. And we're going to offset it to the right. <laughs> That's way too fast. Way too fast. We need to be like over here. Why? Is it just because that's too fast? Why is this so fast? Even though that's not displaying right. Or do I just suck? I'm so confused. Why are we hearing that even though it, we shouldn't be? What I want to do is I want to have this play notes at different rhythms. But this is just going so fast no matter what. Let me re retry that one sec. Arpeggiator. Oh yeah, this is what I want. Oh, I was fucking going the wrong way. Sorry, guys. I, that's totally my fault. So let's do this again. Let's go Max for Live, LFO. Let's map the rate. Set it random. Smooth it. Offset it big time. Really slow. <laughs> Yeah, we're getting all this random stuff. Now that tail's a bit too long coming from one thing. I think it's this. Oh, no, I think it's this. 
Yeah, we need less of you. And we need less of the grain delay. So now we got random rates and now is when we can do our final obliteration where once I've created a sound I've got the good take of it right here I do a final take of just absolute obliteration so I have this uh, beat repeat preset you guys can like screenshot this and copy it. it's really easy it just randomly creates glitches pretty much constantly, but if you lower the chance, and we do it twice. gonna finish it off with trash just obliterate it final take obliteration here we go sending off this is our final bit of sound design if you can call this sound design some more fun with presets <laughs> I could write a whole song out of this shit. This, sh <laughs> this should be my next live show.
What? Okay, I like that. I really like that effect on it. Now let's start changing the preset. Let's try what? Probably so boring and abrasive, but I don't care. So now let's take it for a spin and then we'll export it. And there we go. That's how I do sounds. So, or no, not, it's not always how I do sounds, but that's how we did sounds today. Look at all that material. Oh my God. Look at all that bass. Ooh, baby. Holy smackaroni. Holy for Jesus, okay. Sampler, toss it in, E, arm it, zero. Dude, I could write a whole song out of this. And that's usually what I do. Usually what I do is I like take one bass or similar basses and I'll make a song like out of one take to give a song like a character. Oh yeah, we need the, we need punch on this. Sounds like a gunshot. Let's see what else we got. Okay, clearly we want a bit abrasive in the middle. That's crazy. How did I add punch? If you go to the pitch envelope. There's a pitch envelope here. Pick how far it's starting up in pitch. Pick how quickly it's decaying. Make it decay quickly and you got punch. Damn, there's some cool shit in here. Yo, what up? Sorry, you're tuning in just about at the end. I'm not staying much longer. Oh! Some of these are nuts. Like that's fucking... Oh! I could easily write a song from this. Oh, it's so good. Yeah, 
Yeah. That's a sound. So then what I do is I take the sound. I don't want to lose our good take, so we got to go way back here to when we just had this. Are these the two takes? Yeah. When we just had this, I'll extend this one out fully. Yoink. Oops, grab the wrong end. Yoink. Yoink. I'll just make them one patch since they're pretty much the same. Yeah, and then I would export that to my library and that's how I do most of my bases. Um, obviously I do work a lot with patches and in the future we will look at that, but I also do a lot of just recordings of heavily processed sounds. Sometimes I'll do more one-shot stuff. It's never the same, and in the future I'll do more. Um, but yeah, this was kind of a test run. I poorly timed it. I didn't realize it was a my anniversary with my girlfriend today. And uh, I planned this when I should have. So I'm going to cut it there at just over an hour. I will do more of these in the future. Hopefully we won't deal with the technical difficulties. Uh, and hopefully it will be a lot more polished. But I hope you guys got something out of this sound design video. Uh, if you guys have requests, maybe in future videos I can actually do sound design that you guys want. Again, sorry this is kind of cut short notice. But that's a bit of an insight into how I do my bass design. So hope you guys have a good one. I'll see you guys later. Now I'm going to awkwardly go over to OBS where I can stop this and 